Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You, of course, can follow me on Twitter, you ever so lucky people, at Movies TV Mad. And welcome to Monday's edition of the Doctor Who Daily. So welcome, 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 welcome. Let's talk about Clara Osborne. She's such an interesting character, isn't she? Because she first appeared when Amy and Rory were still kind of doing their long goodbye. Um, listen, season seven's a weird season of Doctor Who. Moffat decided to have five episodes doing this long goodbye for Amy and Rory. I didn't like it. It didn't work for me. It dragged out far too much. But in their first episode, which is Asylum of the Daleks, we see a version of Clara. And she basically, the big twist ends up that she's actually a Dalek. So, uh, and then we don't know. She's gone, basically. So, we say goodbye to Amy and Rory at a uh, eventually, but then we have the Christmas special, The Snowman, where we see Clara Oswald again, but as some, as a Victorian kind of babysitter, nanny or whatever you want to call her. Again, she dies afterwards, um, but she turns up in, you know, in season 7B. Season 7B is, for me, superior to 7A, but listen, it's interesting, really, the whole thing with Clara, because it always mixes in with my opinion of season seven. I always say any season of Doctor Who's revival is probably better than most shows we get out there, but still it wasn't, it was weird because we were in an anniversary year. This, the 50th anniversary was approaching and it was just weird. There didn't seem to be any celebration in season seven. Um, and I don't think we even knew about the Day of the Doctor till kind of more closely to when it was coming. I think we knew within three months or so. So anyway, I mean, Clara was an interesting character because when we first met her in Asylum of the Daleks, she came across really well. Well, she's be, she'll be an interesting companion, but she dies. And then in The Snowman, we think, well, she'll be an interesting companion, then she dies. And so we're reintroduced to a modern version of Clara Oswald and um, she doesn't have any memory of the doctor I mean the doctor remembers her the doctor's been looking at looking for her ever since the snowman he's now obsessed with her he's dressing up as a monk he's going to the past looking for her and stuff he doesn't know what's going on anyway he finds her after getting a random phone call from this version of Clara uh, who knows anyway um, so they meet they have this adventure and now the doctor is now, when the Doctor meets this version, this modern version of Clara, he doesn't like her. He doesn't hate her, but he doesn't like her. He has no affinity of her. He's just using her to find out the mysteries behind her. Why he's met her twice and she's died. And who is she? Why doesn't she remember him? And this is, is this, you know, what's going on here? So he becomes utterly obsessed. But then when we get to journey to the centre of the TARDIS, it all... It gets, it gets to boiling point and he just blurts out and says everything. I met you here and you died. I met you here and you died. Who are you, a trick or trap? And she doesn't know the foggiest of what's going on. And she says that the doctor's scaring her. That's when the doctor knows that this isn't the Clara he's met before, which makes the mystery all the better. Now, personally for me, and I like the mystery box of who Clara is. A lot of people didn't like it because it didn't... They say it didn't make her a character. I think that's bollocks, but everyone's entitled to their opinions. And so I think the relationship between Clara and Matt's Doctor was a much more positive relationship than the one with Capaldi. Now, Stephen Moffat did this very much on purpose because we were all still in love with Matt Smith when he regenerated. And I think even though by the end of season seven, we find out how there's multiple versions of Clara and basically she went into the Doctor's time stream and, you know, versions of her splintered through time and that's why there were so many versions of Clara Oswald. And she sees these different versions of the Doctor as well. And the, th the thing is with me, she knows, by that time she knows that the Doctor looks different, that he's regenerated before, so she knows the deal. But when the Doctor regenerates from Matt Smith to Peter Capaldi, she treats um, Peter's Doctor, the 12th Doctor, like he's not even the Doctor. That's amazing, isn't it? Because she's a young girl and she's kind of acting out like a spoiled child. Why aren't you the man you used to be? Now you're an old man. Well, I don't want you anymore. And it's only because she gets a phone call from the previous Doctor, the way he was, Matt Smith, and he kind of says, you know, please help me. And then... 
you know, Peter's doctor says, I'm standing right in front of you. I love that bit, by the way. And you think they've reached some kind of clarity there. But this doctor, the 12th doctor, is, is, is ruder, he's aggressive, he doesn't treat anyone with respect, including Clara, and it gets to a point where she's constantly slapping him. Now, I didn't like her slapping him because if we're going to say, you know, violence against women on television or anywhere in the world, real life or fantasy life is abhorrent, then violence against from women to men shouldn't be allowed either, right? Anyway. And so we go through season eight where there's this really kind of toxic relationship between Clara and the Doctor because he's very rude and he, he, he's not a very nice guy. He's not, the, he's not the Matt Smith Doctor anymore. And she's treating him like he's another person. And then she gets a boyfriend, someone she teaches with, who was in the army, and this guy, and I forgot his name now, but he's kind of sarcastically going, yes, sir. He's, he goes, you remind me of my sergeant major or my colonel or whatever. And I think that's a great thing, isn't it? Because what Moffat does that, all younger people don't get older people and older people don't get younger people because younger people see older people as what they've become and older people see younger people as what they once was and what they wish they were still, vibrant, youthful, um, although I think some older people are more vibrant and youthful and have more energy and zest than younger people. I mean, it's out there. It's factual, right? Anyway, so Danny Pink, that's her boyfriend's name. That's right. So Danny and Clara don't have a good relationship with the doctor. And so, sometimes it comes across as hate and despising the doctor, which is odd. Why are they, you know, why do they remain involved? Um, why do they remain involved with the doctor? Anyway, so basically the whole of season eight is about... Clara and the Doctor struggle. She still hasn't accepted him. She can't accept the fact that he's changed. And really, in a way, she's taking it out on him. Now, the Doctor's difficult. This is a really Dr. Gregory House Doctor. And he's always, he's kind of shaving against the grain. This is a really wacky, different version of the Doctor. And I think the season eight version of Capaldi's Doctor is probably my favorite because that's when he, as I say, he's rude, he's toxic, he's fun. Because those kind of characters who are difficult are more fun to watch. When we get to season nine, he starts to, I don't know, be a bit more calmed down, which is kind of a shame, but they're evolving the character and I get that. But in season eight, he was, he was a lot of fun to watch Capaldi and that's when I really enjoyed him the most. Um, so ultimately, we get to the finale when we get the return of Missy and the Cybermen. And I think Danny dies and she wants, the, she's trying to take the TARDIS to save Danny and... She, you know, she tries to, she force, she tries to force the doctor in, on, you know, tries to force the doctor into it, and the doctor knows what's coming, and you know, he's wise to Clara, and he just looks at her and says, "Do you know me so little that you, you thought I would never help you?" Or whatever he says, that's the moment. That's the moment Clara looks at him, and it's not said, but that's the moment she accepts him as the doctor. Maybe many of us at that moment accept him for the doctor, because before that, their relationship relationships toxic that moment when she tricks him into doing all of that i mean it's really really dark stuff but when he says or basically all, pretty much what he says is all you had to do was ask but she thought he would never do it basically she never saw him as the doctor but when she saw him say that she then realizes this is the same doctor she met this is the matt smith doctor this is all the doctors the doctor is just one person who changes personality and appearance and it was a great way for younger people to come to terms with this regen regeneration, having this older, but consider considerably older person, an older actor, playing the Doctor, because I think a lot of people spoke up against it. This is what I say. It's not just with Jodie. People had issues with an older Doctor. So people ain't kind of um, sexist. They're kind of ageist. So there's always some kind of Easternism going on with these things. But, yeah. But the older fans love Capaldi because he's an older doctor. The first doctor was an older doctor. So I understand that. And so that moment, Clara and the doctor became friends again. And it's a beautiful moment. And I think it's absolutely fantastic the way they did it. So, but if I'm honest, I probably do prefer um, Matt Smith's Clara to Peter Capaldi's Clara. I just found her more engaging. But a lot of people don't like Clara. But then we get to the kind of end story for Clara. So we get this, what is it called, Into the Raven or whatever it's called, right? And she sacrifices herself. It's brilliant. She tells him not to, you know, not to go dark, not to, not to be angry. 
and he kind of promises, although he doesn't mean that promise. Then we get this amazing episode, one of the best episodes in Doctor Who history, Heaven Sent. So we spend about 50 minutes to just under an hour of the Doctor having this brutally emotional kind of episode where he's trying to basically, I don't remember exactly what's going on, but he's trapped, he's trying to, it, basically, he keeps the day keeps on repeating itself. It's an amazing episode, right? You have to see, even if you don't watch Doctor Who, you'll love this episode. It's amazing. So we get to an episode like Heaven Sent, and ultimately he breaks through to Gallifrey. He's finally found Gallifrey, because that was a thing, him searching for Gallifrey since the day of the Doctor. And so basically, that's the tease for the season finale. We get to the season finale, Clara is brought back to life. It's weird. She erases his memory or whatever. And they did all this hard work. Now, season nine is an interesting season because it's actually, there's no reason why anyone should hate season nine because the two partners is really good. There's some really good stories in there. It's some of the best Doctor Who you'll ever see, by the way. Credit to Stephen Moffat for that. But that finale, and I don't know if he wanted, he did it on purpose to upset people or because he thought it'd be funny. I don't know how anyone can see that finale or write that finale and think, yeah, that'd be good. We'll bring her back to life. We'll do this. We'll do that. We'll make the finale the Clara show. When we wanted the Doctor doing battle with the Time Wars or whatever was going to happen, because he's so angry at this point. But Moffat goes, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to undo everything I did. And I will never understand why he did that. I love Stephen Moffat. I do. I think he was a great showrunner at times. He did run an inconsistent show, but it was an inconsistent, entertaining era of Doctor Who as far as I'm concerned. But Hellbent, it is Hellbent the finale, isn't it? Hellbent is just... I would never understand why he did it. I'll never understand. And it was just weird. The whole thing's with me. Not me, but the character played by Maisie Williams. That was her name, right, if I remember rightly. Um, that was weird. Uh, basically, that... I don't think that finale ruins the season. Because I still think that season's pretty great. And I think at that time, he needed to do something great. And he did. Missy was great in that season. Everything was great. But it just ended. It just ended in a weird way. Yes, he subverted everyone's expectations, but not in a good way. As I say, a subversion of expectations is Brad Pitt being told by Kevin Spacey that Gwyneth Paltrow's head is in a box. Subverting somebody's expectations is when Dexter kills a serial killer, but before he kills him, murdered Dexter's wife, Rita. That's subverting expectations in a good way. What Ryan Johnson did by killing Snoke isn't a great subversion. What Stephen Moffat did by bringing Clara back to life and doing all of that, which they did, which nobody expected, is not a good subversion. There are good subversions and bad subversions. Now, bad subversions like what Ryan Johnson did and what Moffat did um, with the season nine finale, uh, not only subverting expectations, but you're playing around with your consumer, your fans, your people who tune in loyally every week. You gave them such a rich, heroic death for Clara. You gave the Doctor... 50 minutes of mourning in a compellingly emotionally way and then you took it away from them and I think if you think about that Stephen and you may you still think you may be clever maybe you and Mark Gatiss are sitting there still laughing about it but at the end of the day you ruined it for yourself because when fans have a go at you about that and when they were having a go at you obviously in a constructive way because I, I wouldn't go for anything else but if people were criticising you constructively you got what you deserved because you created the perfect Doctor Who revival season. And in one finale, you took it away. And because this video is about Clara, by taking that, that finale ruined Clara, you took away her moment. Because if we're going to talk in the terms of this era and this generation, you gave a strong young woman an iconic heroic death. Brilliant. Then you said, you're going to live together, you're going to live forever, you're going to travel with me, for eternity in the TARDIS, you didn't die a hero, and basically it doesn't matter what happens to you next because we're never going to see you again anyway, most probably. So you took away what you were trying to do, give a strong young female character a heroic death, 
and have the male character celebrate that character by the way he was compellingly emotionally mourning in that historic episode. You took all that away. What you did, Stephen, was undo all your hard work. This has been the Doctor Who Daily. I'm Mick, your host with the most. You are watching Movies TV Mad. Like, share, comment, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss this perfection. And I'll see you again for even more Doctor Who Daily. See you again tomorrow. Till then, bye.